When dividing decimals, we must make sure to place our decimal in the proper position before actually performing any of our division. If we end up with a decimal in the wrong spot, that can completely change the value of our answer, making it incorrect. There is one rule that we must make sure to follow when dividing decimals. And the rule is the number on the outside, which is called our divisor, must not have a decimal inside it. This number, or the divisor, must be a whole number. To accomplish this, we can simply take our decimal and move it all the way to the end of that number, turning it into a whole number. So 2.5 in this example becomes 25. And what you do to the outside, the rule says you have to do the same thing to the inside. So taking a look here, we have 23.5, but we're going to take that decimal and move that all the way to the right as well. And then we move the decimal straight up. Now taking a look at the next example, 170 and 8 tenths divided by 14, we see that there is no decimal located inside this divisor. If there is only a decimal inside the dividend or on the inside, the rule is, is you move it directly up. The only time you would move the decimal on the inside is if there is a decimal on the outside. Now proceeding to the last example, we see that there is a decimal in the divisor, but no decimal inside the dividend. So what we do is we have to turn 5 and 7 tenths into a whole number by moving that decimal to the right, giving us 57. Now, there was not one inside the dividend, so what we have to do is add one. If there's one on the outside and not on the inside, you must add one to the inside. You must also move it in equal number of spaces. Notice we have not moved our decimal yet, so we must add a zero first and then proceed to move the decimal one space to the right and then also write a decimal directly above. Now all of our decimals are in the proper position so we can proceed to follow the steps of division. So going back to our first example, we know that we can fit nine groups of 25 into 235. That product gives us 225. Then we subtract and we get a difference of 10. Now we still have a remainder. If you still have a remainder and there is no other digits to bring down, you simply add a zero and drop that zero down and that gives us 100. And we know that we can fit four groups of 25 inside 100. And 4 times 25 is 100, giving us a difference of 0. So we are done with this problem, and the answer is 9 and 4 tenths. Going to the next example, we know that we can fit one group of 14 inside 17. That gives us a product of 14. The difference of 17 and 14 is 3. And then we bring down our next digit, which is a 0. We can fit two groups of 14 inside 30, giving us a product of 28. Next, we subtract 30 and 28, and that gives us a difference of 2. And we have one more digit to drop down, which is the number 8, and that gives us the number 28. Next, we divide 14 into 28, and we can fit two groups of 14 into 28. The product of 2 and 14 is 28, leaving us with nothing remaining. So the answer for this problem is 12 and 2 tenths. With the last example, we can fit 57 into 285 exactly 5 times. The product of 5 and 57 is exactly 285. The difference between 285 and 285 is, of course, you guessed it, 0. Now, in this example, some people would think the answer is 5 and circle their answer, but you must be careful. Notice after the number 5, there is no digit between that and the ending decimal, so we must make sure to write a zero in that place value, and now our answer is 50. So remember, when dividing decimals, it is very important to follow the rules of decimal placement. Failure to do so might result in the wrong answer.